The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. In this video, we're going to learn about loops. Loops, along with conditional statements, are a way to control the flow of a program. In a loop, a piece of code is executed over and over again. Depending on certain conditions you define, you can control whether the program enters the loop or not. You should already be familiar with one type of loop, the main loop of every Arduino sketch, the void loop. But sometimes it's useful to have other loops inside of the main loop. One common type of loop is the while loop. In a while loop, the program enters the loop only if the condition inside the parentheses is true. The sketch will execute the body code in the loop as long as the condition remains true. You could make an infinite loop with a while loop by simply writing true as the condition. But infinite loops aren't very useful since the entire void loop section is already an infinite loop. We usually only want code to loop while a specific event occurs like a button press or when a sensor reaches a certain value. You can make the sketch exit the loop even while the condition is true with the keyword break. Let's see a quick example of a while loop. I'm gonna build a circuit that will blink an LED as long as a push button is pressed. This is actually the same circuit we used in the lecture on buttons and switches. There's an LED connected to pin 11 with the current limiting resistor and a push button connected to pin seven. In the sketch, I'm declaring variables for the pin connected to the LED and the pin connected to the push button. Then I set the button pin as an input with the internal pull-up resistor and set the LED pin as an output. In the loop section, I have a variable called button state, which holds the digital read value from the button pin. Now we get to the while loop. It's kind of similar to an if statement. The condition goes inside the parentheses. Here I want the program to enter the while loop whenever the button is pressed and stay looping as long as the button stays pressed. If you remember from the lecture on buttons and switches, pressing the push button causes pin seven to get pulled low. So my condition is while button state equals low. So when the button is pressed, button state will equal low, making the condition true. So the Arduino will enter the while loop and execute this block of code until the condition becomes false. Since this is a Boolean data type, the condition will only be false when button state is high. So as long as the button is pressed, it's gonna keep blinking the LED on and off with this code here. Let me upload this and we'll see if it works or not. Okay, good, the LED only blinks when I have the button pressed. Now let's take a look at another type of loop, the do while loop. Do while loops work the same way that while loops do. But in do while loops, the body code is executed before the test for the condition occurs. So even if the condition here is false, the code in the body will get run one time. The Arduino executes code line by line from top to bottom. So it'll first enter this do block and execute the code inside it. 
Then it'll reach the while statement and evaluate the condition. If the condition is false, it'll continue on with the rest of the sketch. But if the condition is true, the code in the body will get executed over and over until the condition becomes false. Another type of loop is the for loop. For loops are typically used to increment and decrement counters. They can also be used to initialize large numbers of pins at the same time. Instead of just evaluating a condition for true or false, a for loop evaluates a set of three parameters. The parameters are the initialization value, the condition, and the iteration. The initialization value sets a loop control variable. The loop control variable is usually called i or j. The condition determines when the sketch exits the for loop. The iteration value defines how the loop control variable changes each time the loop is repeated. Any compound operator can be used here. The loop control variable will increase or decrease with each iteration of the loop, according to how the compound operator affects it. Initialization only happens once, at the first iteration of the for loop. Then the condition is tested. If the condition is true, the variable is incremented. This will be easier to understand with an example. Say you want to initialize a bunch of pins as outputs. Instead of doing this, where each pin is initialized separately, you could use a for loop to initialize each pin. Here we declare a loop variable called i and set it equal to zero. The loop control variable holds the loop count, which is going to increase by one each iteration through the loop. Then we set a condition. The for loop will continue looping as long as the condition is true. The condition in this case is the number of pins we want to initialize. We want every pin from 0 to 9 to be set as an output, so the condition is i less than 10. We want the loop control variable to increase by 1 every time through the loop, so we use i++ for the iteration value. i++ is a compound operator. I'm going to show you all the other compound operators you can use in a later video. So the first time through the loop, i will be set to 0. 0 is less than 10, so the condition is true, and the code in the body will be executed. In the pin mode function, the first parameter would usually be the pin number we want to initialize, but we can use the i variable instead. The first time through the loop, i is equal to 0, so digital pin 0 will be set as an output. The next time through the loop, the iteration value i++ will make the loop control variable increase by 1. So i will be incremented by 1, making it equal to 1. Since i equals 1 now, pin 1 will be set as an output. The for loop will continue, increasing i by 1 each time through the loop until i is not less than 10. When i equals 10, the condition will be false, so the loop will exit and continue on with the rest of the sketch. Variables declared inside of loops are local variables. They can't be used outside of the loop. So the i variable we used in the for loop is only defined inside the for statement. You can exit a loop at any point with the break keyword. The break keyword causes the program to exit the loop immediately. It works with while loops, do while loops, and for loops. It's just another way to control the behavior of your loop. For example, you can use break to stop the loop when a specific event occurs. In this example, I put break inside of an if statement. If x equals 3, the if statement will run, and the break command will be executed. That'll cause the sketch to exit the for loop, so this serial print hello won't be executed. But since this serial print goodbye is outside of the for loop, it will be executed. Another keyword called continue allows even more control over the action of loops. Continue causes the sketch to stop the current iteration of the loop and start with a new cycle. As long as x is not equal to 3, hello will get printed once each time through the for loop. But when x does equal 3, the for loop will stop right here, then start a new cycle of the loop. With the continue command, the sketch doesn't exit the for loop. It just jumps to the start of the next iteration. The loop control variable keeps its value, so the count is not lost. Continue is a way to cut short an iteration of the loop when a certain event occurs. 
Understanding how the different types of loops work is important if you want full control over how your sketch operates. We'll see some real life examples of the different ways to use loops in the coming lectures. But in the next video, we're going to see how we can use the serial monitor to get input from a user. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.